Ladies and gentlemen, place your bets now, please. Is this Chinese 150 watt LED light actually going to be 150 watts or 150 watt tungsten equivalent, which would be more like 15 watts? And more importantly, is it going to be earthed? Let's test it and then we'll take it apart and see what's inside. So let's do the earth test first, where I will bring in the meter on continuity and we'll touch the earth wire or ground wire if you prefer continuity and we'll touch a screw that is tapped into the case it is not grounded that's not a surprise okay now let's test the power rating and i'll bring the anti in for this because it tends to be better at the weirder loads so I'm going to stuff, since it's not earth, I'm not going to bother with the earth connection in here. I'll stuff the live in here, add the neutral in here, and, uh, well, what power jing it's going to be. Let's find out. It's very bright. It is, oh, you know what? You know what? It's, it started off 100 watts, and now it's rapidly going down as it heats up. That is quite impressive. That is a lot of light. That is blinding. It's also very flickery. My apologies. I didn't realise it was going to be flickery. Okay, so the power factor is 0.89, which is pretty good. Current, 400 milliamps. It's currently at 88 watts. I can feel the heat off this. And going down because it is thermally regulating. I shall unplug that because that is quite obnoxious. Is this going to be quite hot now? It's not too bad. I'm not sure this is a good thing or not. The other thing we should have checked is the light has little indentations in the back here. Can you see those little indents? There's one there, and there's one there, and they line up the circuit board. Uh, there they are, and uh, technically speaking, if the circuit board is lined up correctly, the LED should be dead center on the lenses from side to side, but I'm not really seeing them quite being as dead centre as they could be. But that's okay. Right, tell you what, I'm going to take the screws out and we'll see what's inside. That is going to take some time because there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 screws. So one moment, please. The screws have been removed. It is time for the big reveal, which is a circuit board... And the silicon seal around the side, they rely a lot on the silicon seal and all these screws to try and make sure, and there's a slight curve in this as well, to try and make sure that does mate down. I will say that certainly on the plastic side, you can see through it that the seal does make all the way around. I don't know how that would be for reliability over time, particularly with pressure changes. Also, uh, what keeps water out can keep water in, and the cable here is the little grommet is just basically poked through there so water's going to get in there and also it could get down the inside is the what about the earth wire the earth wire stuffed underneath not make a connection is this got heat sink compound i would expect it to have heat sink compound it's actually glued i think yeah it's kind of glued but the earth wire is probably just tucked under there the earth wire is just basically stuffed under there in the hope it might make a connection. Uh, right, I wonder if I can get some isopropanol down the back of this. So I'll bring the focus back up a little bit to a more sensible level. And I shall squirt some isopropanol down the back of this. I'm squirting it all from my bench here, probably. Well, it's fine, it's way down inside. But it's not coming off. I'm not sure I really want to take this off now. What if I flex this? I don't think that's a good idea either. I will not be using this. I wonder if where people do actually use these. This is, uh, yeah, this is glued in in some way. It might be silicon it's glued on with, so that's not a good idea to try and remove it. And certainly the isopropanol won't uh, deal with that. Anyway, the configuration of the LEDs, what I can see here is that we've got... The top row, let's zoom down this. The top row of LEDs, it looks as though we've got six in parallel. So these must be multi-chip LEDs. And then we've got another six, one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight. Uh, and then these are all in parallel groups of six as well. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Um, 24, if that is three chips, 24 times three chips, because I think it would be, could be wrong here, 72 times three volts per chip equals, uh oh, 72 times volts per chip would be 216 which is what these normally aim at because it is basically unrectified they're going with this sort of rms voltage um the driver circuitry here we've got two uh, fusible resistors we've got a metal oxide resistor across that we've got a bridge rectifier here a slight load resistor and then one connection goes to this end snakes through all the leds to the other end and the other connection goes to the other end, and then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine uh, linear current regulators with a couple of capacitors across. Um, there's positions for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen linear regulators. But these are the bit that were throttling the current there, because as these heat up, they have built in thermal sensing, which is supposed to be scattered across the circuit board to detect it. But in this case, uh, they're all in parallel and they're just as they heat up, they start regulating that current back. If you wanted to cut the power of the panel down, you could do that trick that you use an external capacitor in the series or you could theoretically just get rid of some of these resistors down here uh, 6.8 ohm are they all 6.8 ohm they all look like 6.8 ohm so they're just setting a current and because they're current regulators you can just put a whole load of them in parallel as they do here right tell you what i'll doodle a circuit diagram down for you just to give you an idea of what the circuitry is like one moment please I started doodling that, and then I thought, you know what, I should just do it live. So here's the incoming supply via these fusible resistors, quite a low value. Uh, brown, black, gold. Is that going to be one ohm, I think? Let's probe that. Let's uh, get the meter in and just double check that, just in case I'm wrong there. Actually, it's quite a hard thing to measure because the resistance of the leads themselves is uh, significant. But tell you what, let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. Let's stick... This is uh, zeroing the leads out, so they're currently showing 1.2, and this side it's, uh, yeah, the 1 ohm each. That's fine. So 1 ohm, 1 ohm. Then there's a metal oxide resistor across the two contacts to protect the circuitry against uh, that's uh, not how you draw a metal oxide resistor but that's fine that's the AC in and uh, then we get the bridge rectifier I shall draw the bridge rectifier quite big actually just to take the AC in there one dial just because that's lazy plus minus the plus goes straight to the LEDs um, the LEDs are configured as a large array of parallel groups. So we've, let's just draw them as three in parallel, but there's actually six. And those uh, are linked like that. And then there's the next uh, parallel group. Two there's some advantages to this. It spreads the dissipation across them, but it also means if one LED fails, uh, it doesn't impact the others so much. It's going to keep them lit uh, but there are effectively uh, 24 strings of six parallel LEDs, 24, 24 times six. Uh, and those are LEDs. Then they go down to the regulator, and I'll just draw one of the regulators. So the regulator, here's the negative coming along here, goes to that. Then there is the resistor, which if I, was that 6.8 ohm? Let me just uh, check that. 6.8 ohm and you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of those ludicrous times nine. Oh, I should actually see if there's a number in those. And then just as protection against this uh, spike initially at power up until this stabilized, there is a little 10 nanofarad capacitor times two. 10 nanofarad 
times two, which uh, just basically, it's going to create quite a spike through the LEDs of current, but it actually protects the transistor in here, which is more critical to them, apparently. Uh, or, let's see if there's a number in this. There is a number. It's a faint number. I'll see if one of them is brighter than the others. I'll turn it up the right way. That would be so much easier. That's why it was hard to read. PT4515EF. 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 Make square those fives off. And that's more or less it. Uh, it's a very rudimentary circuit. These are just mass produced. The metal here is a aluminum style alloy. Not magnetic, but the metal bracket that comes with it for mounting it to whatever you're mounting it to is steel. Um, the screws, I guess they're steel. They are steel, so that's a, a little corrosion point there. And no are. There's a little uh, alignment studge, which they are actually roughly through the circuit board. Uh, but there we have it. Uh, surprisingly powerful. I wasn't expected to be remotely near 100 watts, but it was 100 watts-ish. Totally not waterproof. Uh, not earthed, just the usual stuff. I do hope people aren't buying these and using them. But that's it. The uh, the surprisingly powerful um, LED light, floodlight type thing. Um, almost lived up to its expectations. Definitely it lived up to the expectations of no earth. And uh, the other expectation was that uh, it would be nowhere near the 150 watts, but it did actually get fairly close to that. So there we have it. Interesting and well worth exploring.